Hi guys, it's David from Automotive Press. I have the honor of uh, talking to the chief engineer for Subaru Outback right here. Would you mind just introducing yourself in English and I'll switch to Japanese? Okay. My name is Toshihiro Oya from Japan. I am uh, in the uh, project manager. manager. Yeah. All right, so Oya-san is with us at the New York Auto Show. He flew all the way from Japan just a couple of days ago and uh, he's pretty jet lagged, but he's uh, nice enough to be able to accommodate us. So I'm going to ask him to just do a quick walk around of the new Outback. So he's in charge of this. It's quite a substantial change, a very important change. So I will switch back and forth between Japanese and English. I always translate back to English for you guys. So let's, uh, let's go through this, follow me, and then we'll find out first of all from outside. So the interesting thing that um, the chief engineer has explained to me is that most of you guys already know and heard that this car is 50 millimeter higher, uh, but it's a little bit more complex than that. So for example, the actual body itself is 30 millimeter higher. That includes the hood line and then also the width or the height of the door. Uh, so if you go up to the, the height of this uh, roof rack here up to this point, it's actually 30 millimeter higher than the previous gen out back. But if you include the antenna at the back, which sits just a little bit higher, it's 50 millimeters. That's how they come, came up with the calculation. In case you guys are thinking inches, 50 millimeters, give or take two inches, by the way. Um, but because it's higher, they were able to raise the seat for the driver's side. So the front seats are raised, also 30 millimeters. So you set up nice and high, giving you a feel of SUV. But they did not raise the seat for the back and therefore the rear headroom has increased by 30 millimeters. So that's, a, I think, a very interesting point that is not obvious in the press release. So what else has he told, told me? It's a couple interesting things is, uh, one is actually the ground clearance, which is 8.7 inches for the uh, Outback and 9.5 inches for the Outback Wilderness, actually are the same as before. So they haven't uh, raised any higher. Still, 9.5 inches for Wilderness is really, really high off the ground. And then also he mentioned a few things like these are claddings are quite different much more bolder looking but they designed it so that these are not as obvious if you happen to scratch them so just the type of material they chose makes it um, less obvious i guess if you happen to damage it and also just inside if you were able to come a little bit closer here there's a bit of a, a foot grip here molded into the plastic so that if you have to put your foot in here and then climb up to pick up something it's got a bit of an extra grip there to give you that, um, I guess, ease of use to grab something on the roof rack here. So I'm going to also ask him a little bit more about the, um, the powertrain and then we'll jump into the interior. So actually, before I move into the powertrain, he also mentioned to me about the roof racks, which are interesting. A couple of things, there's actually notches built into the roof rack here so that it makes it easier for the crossbar to make sure that it's uh, lined up. So if you put on the second notch here, you put on the second notch over there, and that makes it easier to line up uh, the roof, uh, roof bars, or cross bars, I should say. He also said that this one can now take 700 pounds of weight, static weight from the top. So if you're camping or something, and you want to put a couple people on the roof rack, um, that's actually very possible. And even the lateral force, it's up to 220 pounds. Yeah. So you can have quite a bit of uh, weight pulling it for for whatever reasons you may need to do that for camping and so forth. So the entire roof has been changed and I think engineered more to allow you to do things like a camping. So for example, if you were to put a hammock here and hang it off here, that's okay with the new system because it can take a lateral force up to 220 pounds. So that's quite substantial change just to do with the roof rack. Now let's move into maybe the powertrain. Alright, so now we're going to ask about the engine, which is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine, which is um, more or less the same engine, but with some changes from my, my understanding. I'll ask him a little bit more about that. And then there's also the optional 2.4 liter turbo, which is in the wilderness. And depending on whether you live in the US or Canada, it's also available on some of the models uh, that are not wilderness models. So let, let me find out a little bit more about what's happened with the powertrain. All right. So he said actually the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder hasn't changed all that much in terms of hardware side, um, but they have um, recalibrated the engines on the software side. So now the maximum horsepower and the torque happens at slightly lower RPM, which will give you a feel of a, a better acceleration. 
So if you take it up to a higher speed, you might notice that a little bit. But otherwise, it's just a generally improved software to go with a naturally aspirated engine. Uh, we'll go to the Outback Wilderness a little bit later and talk about the 2.4 turbo. Um, but I'm gonna also ask him about the transmission and also suspension. Okay, what else? Well, the, the actual transmission is the same, still CVT transmission. Um, and suspension is more or less the same, but if you go to the wilderness, then you now have the adaptive suspension, which isn't available on this particular model right here. Uh, but they have changed and re-engineered the steering mechanism, which borrows from other Subaru models. I believe it was from either Crosstrek or from WRX, uh, but it's a two pinion steering mechanism, steering rack. So it provides better feedback, a little bit more of a road feel, and of course, I won't know because we won't get to drive these cars for a little while yet. But he, uh, he assures me that the steering feels better and it's going to handle a little bit better. So looking forward to trying that out. Okay, so we're now inside the Outback. Again, more changes here, maybe more radical changes here. I'm going to ask him to just explain to me some of the overview and what was changed inside. All right, so lots of changes inside the new Outback. We have the new 12.3 uh, uh, inches digital cluster for the driver's side and 12.1 inch for the infotainment system. We can't turn on right now, but it is an all new design in terms of dash, in terms of the seats and so forth. And thankfully what they've done, which is important I think, is to bring back all the buttons and switches. So we have uh, physical buttons and switches for for AC, for HVAC, for radios and audio controls, also for things like seat uh, warmer and so forth. They're all physically available now. Even the start stop button, turning that off is on the center console. Uh, and thankfully, it's a real lever here, I guess, for the transmission shifter. It's not a button, it's not a you know shift to the left or right. This is a proper, normal one, I love that. So now the whole interior looks very different, much more upscale, even uh, kind of a nice touch with a uh, two-color system here, so brown mixed in with a, with a, with a black. And you know, I can tell they use soft materials here, so very nice finish. And also, thankfully, not too much glossy black trims. And that's really, really nice because most of us just don't like the glossy black piano black trims. Again, I just mm. confirmed with them that all the materials are soft mm. touch, even the door. Mm. And that is a, a, a nice departure because a lot of cars, especially from Toyota, mm. have moved to hard plastic. You know, they feel cheap, they look cheap. And this looks really, really upscale. It looks proper, like in terms of this price range. Actually, no, mm. it looks better than what this price range might suggest. Mm. So it looks more upscale than uh, what the Outback might stand for. So I really appreciate that they've done the inside and also the seats are very comfortable as i was mentioning and he pointed out the seat is also the new design and the uh, the ventilation is stronger now but also quieter at the same time so lots of changes and i just find this whole interior very functional and uh, very very interesting uh, in terms of design so I, I love the interior let's see if he has anything else to say another interesting thing is that maybe you can just bring the camera a little bit closer since yeah this way and uh, they actually really thought about the cup holders. So the cup holders here um, is this way, vertical versus horizontal. Mm -hmm. Because if it's horizontal, it's more awkward and it could like hit your thighs and so forth. But if it's vertical, it's actually more natural in terms of grabbing it from your hand. Uh, so they redesigned it so that it's more practical and user-friendly. And also if you have a really huge tumbler, like a 32 ounce, tumbler that many of us may have uh, they made sure that it fits in a door pocket which is a bit hard to see right now but um, so all four doors have a huge huge round opening to put one of those big tumblers um, I mean you know what just looking at it, it looks like it's, it can fit something super big <laughs> so they made sure that uh, it will accommodate large large uh, tumbler or a coffee cup I guess both front and back all four doors are designed that way also, before we finish off, I'm going to take you to the uh, Wilderness um, model as well quickly for just, just to show the differences. But he said there are a number of Easter eggs uh, for location, he said, that you will have to find. He doesn't want to tell us right now. So, <laughs> uh, but hopefully, maybe I'll find it if I'm going around it carefully. Probably some kind of emblem or design elements to do with, uh, with, to do with uh, Outbacks. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, let's just do a final check with uh, Wilderness model and we'll hop in there and take a look and then we'll finish off with the interview. 
All right, so we have the Outback Wilderness now. And what's surprising me is how much difference there is between the standard Outback and the Wilderness. So he pointed out they decided to go aggressive. So the whole front end is actually different. It spells out the word Subaru, no Subaru emblem in the front. You got two vertical thing that looks like a kind of bumper. And the whole front end is pretty aggressive. Even the fog lamps looks different. So I really like it. I think uh, they've done a really good job with the exterior design. And also the back is different. So let's take a look at the back as well. You can follow me over here. All right, so this one has the kind of fake mud on it <laughs> to make it look rugged. But let's come to take, take a look at the back of the, uh, uh, the wilderness model. And the back is also quite different. Maybe Chief Engineer can explain to me a little bit more about what's, what the difference might be. All right, so the back is actually quite interesting because uh, he reminded me or he mentioned to me that he also likes outdoor sports. So he does snowboarding, he does surfing also, yeah. right? Yeah. And I do fishing as you guys probably know. And he said that they designed this plastic molding here so that you can lay your snowboard against it and not scratch the car, not scratch the paint. In my case, I said I can lean my fishing rods against it. Either way, you know, it's got, it's got a little bit of a hook here as well. So it's designed to allow people to lean something against it without damaging it. Uh, it's also quite different from the normal Outback. And you got the reverse lamp right here. This is still a prototype, so it looks a little bit different maybe from the production model. Uh, but it's, again, spills out the Subaru here. You do have the emblem in the back compared to the front, but it looks rugged. It looks really nice. Uh, what about the side? Um, can you show us anything different on the side? Here? Oh, this is quite dirty or actually the kind of fake mud is on here. But I guess this, this part is also a little bit different. Is that right? So this one is also thicker here. Right. So to give you kind of that rugged feel. The wheels are black out, I think. They're black. Yes. And then is this different? Just, uh, just this is this. Yes. different. So you have the bronze accent, so that's different from the regular Outback. You've got the badge here. Badge, yeah. And then this one is also, no, this is the same. The same this yeah. is the same. Uh, inside, is that any different? Is the seat looks different? Or if you come in here and just point to the seats, the seats are also a little bit different design from the normal um, Outback. Uh, there's also some uh, bronze accent here and there as well. So those are some of the key differences. Um, the last question I have for the chief engineer is the engine. So this one has the 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Yes. Maybe we can open the hood. Would that be okay? Okay, okay so we have the 2.4 liter turbo engine here. Uh, this is um, exclusive to the wilderness, right? All the wilderness is 2.4 turbo. Uh, obviously higher output in terms of power and torque. The basic design again hasn't changed from before, but there's a little bit of difference in terms of the peak power and peak torque. It's arriving at a lower RPM, so you probably notice that when you drive it. Otherwise, they have upgraded the software and the calibration and the tuning. So once again, that might translate to some refinement in terms of driving feel. Uh, but um, ba the basic uh, design hasn't changed, and so which is a good thing because it's a good engine. It's a very reliable engine. It's proven itself. Uh, boxer design, as you know, it's unique to Subaru, and uh, it's kind of open design. So you get an intake that goes in here, feeds in through the intercooler here. So. Uh, very cool, clean design, but I'm really happy that we have the new Outback and the Wilderness right here. It's a big deal for Subaru. It's one of the most important models for Subaru, and I'm very excited, and I'm very honored to be here with the chief engineer. Um, I'll just ask him any final words. So his final um, recommendation or his final request for all of you guys is to design the Outback and the Wilderness to be uh, more adventure ready, to give you guys kind of open road and enjoying the outside. And he just wants all of us to use this car and enjoy outside, enjoy outdoor activity and make the most of our lives. So that was a very nice gesture from, from our chief engineer. Very happy to be here. He's gonna fly back to Japan shortly. And I'm very thankful to, um, to you all for all your help and for explaining both cars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the section below.